My name is Mads Arvard Damsbo, and I am a virtual effects technical director, I guess CompTD, and a pipeline technical director uh, from Nordic Film Shortcut. We are a Danish Copenhagen-based uh, visual effects and post-production facility that mainly does TV series and feature films. And what you see right there is some of the work we did quite recently on uh, The Rain, which is the first Scandinavian Netflix TV series. Two series, and we did the first two seasons, and we're slowly ramping up for the third one right now. So we're having quite a lot of fun. And through the years, I've done quite a few things with you know solving creative challenges through development, and both sort of at work and also at home. And some of the things have been like creating custom tools using with custom interfaces by using Python and Qt. Uh, for example, custom grading ops and uh, gradient, ed gradient editor, something that I was missing quite a lot from, uh, from other tools. Uh, and combining existing tools with Python, for example, the 3D tracker that Nuke has, combining that would be the Python to drive uh, roto shapes and paint strokes to create something that works a bit like smart vectors. Uh, and lastly, adding support for external hardware uh, things like the tangent panel um, and being able to use that inside of Nuke and Nuke Studio. Uh, and something that I've had a lot of fun with is making uh, things like uh, Blink Script. And this particular demo is quite dark, but uh, it's all running through Blink Script, uh, the text effect, the lens flares, the particles, the post effects. Um, so it does have a lot of power to create these 2D effects. And quite recently, I did my first commercial product, uh, which is the, the Nuke Point Render, which is sort of a basic uh, 3D rendering engine for Nuke. That I guess the core is just, uh, it's about rendering points really, really fast, because that was something that the scanline render was not too good at. Um, and yeah, so that is a full 3D render created using basic, uh, you know, built in Nuke nodes, so no external plugins or anything like that. So we just copy a Nuke script containing the point render and it will work you know, in any other script. Um, so what is Blink Script? Well, Blink Script is a 2D image processing framework that's created by the Foundry. Uh, it has this uh, sort of philosophy of write once, deploy everywhere. So you write your code and it automatically works on the CPU and the GPU and across the core, and it once uh, across uh, every OS. So you don't need to worry about having like special versions for uh, Linux and uh, OS X or uh, Windows for that sake. And so if we just take a step back and look at what are the options for creating sort of image processing uh, using code in Nuke. And on one hand, we have the there we go, <laughs> the expression node, which is this quite flexible and easy to learn and sort of easy to, to read um, uh, yep, expression node. Um, and the downside, with it is, the downside with it is that it's, of course, it's expressions. So you quite easily end up with this very long like uh, scripts that are quite hard to like get an idea of what is actually going on. So you end up with, you know, some points where it's just too hard to to sort of make changes and and uh, and uh, adapt. Um, and the thing about being flexible is that it works across every version of Nuke. So if you have like you open an old backup disk from back at uh, Nuke six and you open the script in Nuke twelve, it will still work. So you don't need to recompile it or anything like that. Uh, on the other hand, we have the NDK, which was just talked about, um, which is sort of the new development kit, and the sky's the limit for what kind of plugins you can do. Uh, you have nice debugging, um, but it's not necessarily as flexible because you know we have to restart Nuke every time, and also the fact that every time there's a new version of Nuke, you have to recompile all your tools, and sometimes they change something in the NDK, which means that you have to go in and change some of the code. And this means that if you have a lot of plugins, small plugins, just does some basic small things, you end up with that situation where you just, it's a bit too much work to move on to the next version of Nuke. So you don't, you don't have the same flexibility of moving up to a, uh, nearer release, releases. And sort of in the middle there is the Blink Script node. Because this is a, sort of the built-in Nuke node. And it's powerful, it's flexible, it doesn't have the debugging, sadly, and it's harder to learn. 
but it's something you write once and it just works across all versions of new. You don't need to you know, worry about, you can just write it and you don't need to worry about sort of maintaining the code itself. So, uh, and the other thing is that it's quite good for prototyping. So if you're doing a lot of NDK development where you do some more advanced uh, 2D effects, you can actually use Blink Script to do the prototyping and then deploy that Blink Script directly inside the NDK. And so for a lot of people who start, like they, they move from the expression node up to the Blink Script node, they see this and they're, right, that looks very scary because there is a lot of you know, uh, syntax that is, uh, I guess a little bit more complex compared to what you see in the expression node. Um, but if we just you know, try to remove all the unnecessary parts and just look at what are some of the essential parts that are needed to, to get this thing to work. And you know, just a few lines of code. We can actually make it smaller than this, but this, uh, this is a good start. And so if we look at the top up there, the top, uh, it's basically, it's, you have to define a name for the kernel. You can call it anything you want. And next up, you pick a kernel type, most likely you're not going to change that, and lastly you can specify if you want to uh, modify the RGB channels individually or just, just process them as, as one big thing. Next thing, you specify the inputs and outputs. In this case, you can see up here we have a e read, which means the input, and e write, which means the output. And this is basically like, like a group node. You have one input and you have one output. And we also have a thing like we can change the access point here. It specifies if you want to just read the pixel that you have, or if you want to access uh, pixels that are nearby um, or any other random uh, pixel on the, uh, on the uh, input. And so we can also have multiple inputs that would look like this in a group node. Uh, we can also have like just one output and no inputs. And that's basically like this. We cannot have multiple outputs because that's a constraint of Nuke. Uh, next up, we have our sliders. And one thing we have to know about sliders is that uh, Blink Script is self-contained, meaning that we cannot access other nodes and other knobs from like other nodes, I guess. Uh, so this means that the only way that you can feed data into this system is using sliders or using your input images. So uh, you're going to use uh, sliders quite a lot. And lastly, we have the core image processing code. This is where you're going to create all your processing magic and push pixels. And so let's just go through like a basic color operation here. By default, here we see that our code says that the destination, which is our output, is one. And so Nuke is smart enough to figure out, okay, you say one, but it probably means that both the red, green, the blue, and the alpha channel should be one. So, that's quite easy. But what if we want to change, like control the individual colors? So in that case, we have to define that it's four different floating point values, one for red, one for green, one for blue, and one for alpha. And so if we recompile this code, we get basically a green color. That's really nice. But what if our artist wants to be able to control this thing? Uh, they want to have like a new version of the constant node. So in this case, we add a new parameter, which is a constant color we call it, and we just say that the output should be constant color. And in that case, we get a new knob in our Blink Script node that allows us to specify the color, and what we end up with is this thing. So when we drag around the node, the color will update. So that's quite easy. What about if we want to sample inputs? So in this case, we have like before with the constant color, so we change, we add a new input, and we say that the input's name is source, and we say that the output the destination should be the same as input. And so what we get is we have this beautiful sun and it goes just straight through. So what if we wanted to look at the surrounding pixels? Let's say we wanted to do like a 2D transform or something like that. In that case, we would need to change, right now we only access the point, so we would change that to um, access random. And we also, we can get the current position uh, in here using a variable called pus. And then we can just put that into our source. And so this basically just tells us that we read the same, the same as before. We read the sample position um, from the current position. If we add 100 to that, we basically just move the image, which we see before, after, before, after. And yeah. So we can also do bilinear. So if we need to like have 100.5 in this case, then we can sample uh, 100 and 101, and then it does sort of a linear template to create like some, uh, some uh, filtering. 
And let's do some basic distortion. Like this is a sort of one-on-one, one-on-one uh, one -on -one, uh, plugin development here. So we just uh, uh, need to add a custom distortion map. So we create some normals. And we add a new input, as we can see here up here. We call it displacement. And to get this thing to work, we need to uh, create a new variable that uh, contains our positions. So in this case, sample position. And then we need to sample the displacement at the current pixel. And lastly, we add the position onto our displacement position. And so what we end up with, I actually made a mistake here, but I'll show you that later. If we gain up the, the, the vector map we put in, we basically just get you know, a displacement, so quite easy. And of course, this should be, no, it's actually good, no, never mind. Anyway, uh, and then multiple samples. Let's say we wanted to do something a little bit, you know, something that we couldn't do in the expression node. So in this case, we do something like adding a for loop, and we say that rather than just sampling this single point of the, the, the displacement, we sample from the origin and all the way to the final place of the displacement. And if we do that without any sort of variation, we get just a basic, I guess, blur or smearing. So if we add another texture on top of that, we get like some, some, uh, some bit of variation to, uh, to our final result. So what we do is we add a new input, and this is sort of a texture. And then we, uh, what did we do there? Oh yes, I added an output to contain, we're going to add a for loop, so I need to have sort of a place where I could store the final output. And then I basically do a for loop that runs 200 times. So this piece of code is being run 200 times. I have a bit of an issue right now because I define the displacement every time, so I just move that up. And uh, so rather than defining it inside the loop, I define it before the loop. And then I add to the input, uh, to the output, it started out being zero, and then just adding on top of that. And in the end, I get something that's just smearing effect. Um, if we could do something a bit more creative with it, we could, for example, change the source input to like some small points, and change the texture to a lens flare where we cut it in half to create sort of a, something that looks a bit like a particle system where we have like some, you know, you can see that it's kind of the lens flare that's cut in half. Um, yeah. So uh, that's like simple overview of some basic uh, Blink code, yeah. So what else? We also have Blink script inside of Nuke Studio, and this allows us to create custom real-time soft effects. It's super nice. There are, um, you know, if you right-click your timeline item, you can just hit effects and create a Blink script node, and it works basically the same as the Blink script node you see, in, you see inside Nuke. There are a few key differences, one of them being that you cannot do random access, which means that you cannot do things like blurs and distortions and ST maps, which is, of course, quite unfortunate. But there is one key advantage to this, and that is the fact that it runs in real time. And this, of course, is a good thing because we need real-time playback in our timeline. Um, but there are also other cases where this can be quite useful. And so in the case of having like a Blink script inside of Nuke, for example, a lens flare here, and every time I drag this lens flare around, nothing really happens until I let go of the mouse. In that case, it updates. So if I want to have like creative control over how this lens flare looks when it sort of hits the edge or like goes through the center of the image, then it becomes quite hard because I constantly have to move forward and backward or like maybe pre-bake some animation to, to figure out how it looks when it goes across that edge. In contrast to inside of um, Nuke Studio, where you can just take your center and just move it around. And this allows you to get, you know, this gives you that extra flexibility and extra creativity to, um, to control the look of how, how, things, how, things, uh, how things look. And so, yeah, this is also just uh, plain script and all of it. Um, so one of the things that you get used to when you do a lot of Blink script work is that you have to think of data as images. Um, and a good example of that is, for example, if we have an effects department and they do volumes, volumetrics, they do particles, they do fluids, and we somehow want to transfer that data into Nuke and be able to process it through our Blink script nodes. Um, and, I mean, use OpenVDB, no, we cannot do that because, first of all, Nuke doesn't support OpenVDB. And secondly, Blink script does only input images, so we cannot input voxel data if 
it even did support it. Um, so we cannot do that. What we could do is uh, this beautiful fluid simulation is created by Xavier Martin, is a FXCD at ILM, a good friend. And what we can do is that rather than outputting an open VDB or a ABC for this uh, case, then we output an EXR map, EXR map. And so this EXR map contains a bunch of, like each particle is being represented by a pixel. And so in this case, we just have the color map. In another channel, we have the positions. And in another channel, we have the, for example, the velocities and things like that. And that means that we can basically take this, we can have Houdini render out an EXR stack containing each frame um, of our animation. Um, and then we can import that into Nuke and then use Blink Script to read that. And if we apply a 3D, I mean, we get the 3D position there. So if we apply a 3D transformation matrix from our 3D positions, we can get the 2D positions, and then we can do uh, another uh, matrix transformation to get the, um, the two, uh, the, to have add a camera transformation matrix to transform the, the um, to make it possible to add a camera. And in that case, we end up with something like this. And this is just rendered using Blink Script. So the simulation is done Houdini, and the render is directly inside Blink Script. Um, so lastly, I'm just quickly going to glance over something. Uh, it is Blink Script using the NDK. You can, of course, create uh, plugins uh, in the NDK that use Blink Script. And why would you want to do that? Because you have the Blink Script node. But there's a few cool uh, instances where you can do that. And Jerry, who is here today, um, Huxable, who is actually the father of the Duke Particle System, created a quite cool example. And the same thing as before, we have the particles node, for example, and the particle nodes, we cannot add the Blink script node to that because it's not images, it's a particle stream. So what if we took the particle stream and inside NDK, we convert the particle stream or the particle attributes into a big image, so with things like position and velocities and color and rotation, and then we run that through a Blink script and then put all that data back into the, the particle stream. And what we end up with there is like this um, Blink script node that works with particles. So rather than just an image-based uh, Blink script, we have a particle-based Blink script. And as you can see here, it actually uh, compiles in real time, which is quite cool. Um, so that is a really, really cool example of what you can use Blink script uh, to inside the NDK. So if you wanted to get started with the Blink Script, um, there's not a lot of information, of course, since, I mean, it's proprietary, uh, it's the Foundry's um, uh, API. So, but you can go to the Foundry's documentation. There's a lot of quite cool examples, and I think it's quite good, uh, the documentation. There are a lot of different new blocks that have some basic uh, and actually quite uh, complex examples. Uh, there's also a volume render. Um, available online, so you should be able to, to use that. Shader toy, it's a bit of a stretch, but the, the thing is, if you learn to make 3D shaders, uh, GLSL, you can actually translate a lot of that work into um, to, uh, Blink Script. So that is a good way to learn it by learning shaders. And lastly, uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m., I'm going to be at the Foundry booth. I'm uh, going to talk a lot about Blink Script and show some really, really cool examples. So, um, yeah. We can talk there. So thank you.